In this video, we will calculate the equilibrium constant Kp given our delta G, Gibbs free energy, change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction. Notice we're talking about standard state here by that naught, which automatically by default implies 25 degrees C, and pressure because we're talking about gases here of one atmosphere. So the equation that um, helps us solve this problem is delta G standard state, okay, if it's not at standard state, it's something uh, totally different equation, uh, as actually called the Nernst equation, but uh, um, we're at standard state, so we will use this equation, okay, minus RT natural log of K. Remember, K is products over reactants, and um, here we can use pressures. They're asking for Kp, so it's going to be uh, equilibrium constant K in terms of pressure. So let's go ahead and solve this by plugging everything in and solving for K. In this case, the K is Kp. Just a reminder here, this is the equation that we will use. And um, Kp, because it's a pressure, it's going to be pressure Hi. We have to square it, okay, divided by pressure of H2 times the pressure of I2. Um, don't forget that is the version of the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. We can also have an equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations. Remember, gases can uh, exert a pressure. Uh, they could also be expressed in moles per liter, and that is a concentration. Again, don't forget where this square comes from. It comes from the fact that we have two moles in the reaction. That is uh, the essential definition of law of mass action. Okay, for an equilibrium reaction. So we're asked to find delta, uh, excuse me, Kp uh, in terms of pressure. So we got uh, 2.60 kilojoules per mole here. Um, R is um, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So that's a constant. Uh, the T here, uh, this is standard state, so it's going to be uh, 298 Kelvin. 25 degrees C is 298 Kelvin, and they give us this um, delta G here in the problem as 2.60 kilojoules per mole. Let's go ahead and convert that to joules per mole because our R is in joules per mole, and that just means multiplying it by 1,000. So multiplying this by 1,000, we get 2,600 joules per mole. All right, so now all we got to do is isolate K uh, and get it out of the natural log by taking the inverse natural log, which is E. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we got 2,600 joules per mole. Delta G equals minus RT, so minus 8.314 joules over mole Kelvin, minus R times T, which is 298 Kelvin, times natural log of Kp. Kp is what we're trying to solve for. So we'll do the natural log of Kp is equal to 2,600 joules over mole. Now K doesn't have any units, so really it's irrelevant that I'm writing out the units here because K, our equilibrium constants, do not have units. So um, I just took all of this and divided it out isolating my natural log of Kp. To get Kp in and of itself, we take the inverse log, so E of both sides. So taking E of both sides of the equation, E to the power of natural log of Kp is just Kp. E to the power of this fraction is something we'll have to calculate on our calculator. Okay, don't, we have a 298 Kelvin here as well. So, right, so just to reiterate, we took all of this, divided it by the 26 joules per mole, so that gets put in the denominator, isolating natural log of Kp. We take E of both sides uh, to isolate Kp. E to the power of natural log of Kp is just Kp. E to the power of this is something we're going to calculate right now. So we have um, minus 2600 divided by uh, parentheses 298 times 8.314. Again, I'm not really concerned with units. Ks don't have units. So we get that value. We're going to take e to the power of that. So that's the inverse natural log right there. So shift e to the power of my answer, which is that. e to the power of my answer, which is that. Close those parentheses and getting 0.350 in terms of pressure.